Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to talk about Mythic Plus, specifically beating bursting as discipline in just generally high keys that you're going to be facing off against. Now, bursting, of course, whenever you're killing a mob in Mythic Plus, uh, it will basically leave a dot on you over a couple seconds that'll be dealing, you know, quite a bit of damage and health that will also stack up. So if you're killing lots and lots of mobs together, it's going to be stacking higher and higher and higher. And what I wanted to talk about is just how you're going to be handling dealing with bursting and how it's actually not necessarily as scary as you might think going into higher keys. Um, bursting is kind of what I think of as like an upside down uh, affix where if you're doing lower, more easy keys, it's actually pretty difficult to deal with because everyone is incentivized or they're used to a wing all the mobs down as fast as they can, especially because with the way that the order works, we just got out of a sanguine volcanic fortified week, right? Where it's really easy to get everything together, nuke it all down at once, move on to the next thing. So with bursting, uh, I find that, you know, generally speaking, when you're in high keys, it's not the biggest thing that's threatening you there. And a lot of times you're a lot more worried about, you know, some of the boss fights, if, if it's tyrannical, um, like we're seeing in, in the examples right here, you know, where these are the big lethal things you have to be worrying about, where you actually have an entire affix, which is pretty much, you know, uh, not even handled during boss fights, you know? So that's something to kind of keep an eye out for, is that you don't really have to be worrying it for, about it for the boss fights, but that also puts more pressure on you during boss fights to be very, very cautious here. And um, and I can tell you straight up that in a Black Rock Hold of the, the, the video that we're watching right now, it is very, very easy as a priest to get one shot by many things. So. Being prepared is, you know, going to be the name of the game. So, going over how we handle certain mob packs in here, I wanted to start off with the example of the spider packs and things like that that we're seeing as you're killing, after you kill the first boss, you're killing spider packs as you're going up to the stairs, leading to the foyer room uh, of the second boss, right? So, what we're seeing is, you know, we really took it slow. We would try to do whatever we could to just take it slow. We're focusing here on making sure that we're getting all of our the mobs down in short order, letting the, uh, the bursting just fall off very rapidly, and then we're moving on to the next pack here. So one of the biggest things when you're running these high keys is having good tempo, and I think that was one thing that we really, really had in uh, good supply, where we have a very good pace as we're moving through this, where we know that, hey, this stuff's going to take a while, this stuff's going to be a pain, and it's very easy to AoE down in mass. So what we did is we started picking it apart very lightly, we broke it up into a couple pulls, and then later on we made up for this time because of the fact that we were dealing with mobs very rapidly and we had good single target damage. And that's one of the things that this can really, really pump out is very good single target damage. So going into the boss fights, we had that extra, you know, four to 500K that I was always being able to pump out here, which really started buying us more time as we went later on into the instance. But dealing with bursting specifically, when you're having, you know, large amounts of mobs that you just end up having to pull together, uh, which you know, it very much can be an inevitability where this has to happen. A lot of times, you know, your best approach is always, you know, knowing and preparing for the damage ahead of time, as Disc is so good at doing. If you have mobs still up, and this is the ideal, this is the general scenario that you want to be having, you know, make sure you're very astute at when, at when to call to stop DPS. If you want to stop DPS at seven or eight stacks, it's probably a really good idea. Uh, because, you know, going refreshing, not only going up to 9 or 10 stacks, but refreshing the stacks from before is, you know, such a pain. Just extending that duration and making it even harder to, you know, get to the end of it is very, very annoying. Uh, for a lot of these runs, I do take Shadow Covenant. Shadow Covenant is ridiculously good for dealing with bursting. It doesn't work for every single instance. Some instances actually might have higher priorities depending on what your affixes are, depending on what the key is. Um, and some of them might put a greater emphasis on absorption effects, or they might just also have less mobs that are being killed in mass. So for example, you're seeing Court of Stars as an, as an instance which you have these all these impacts that you have to deal with, you know, pretty much have to be dealing with. So having, you know, a little bit of extra wiggle room with Shadow Covenant is a very big deal. But, add on to it, you really don't need Clarity of Will that much because the one-shot mechanics, the big damage that can come out from bosses, is not very high at all in Tyrannicals. I mean, there's a lot of avoidable damage that can one-shot you, but it's avoidable damage, right? So that's something that's not a very high priority. Whereas if you're going into uh, Dark Heart Thicket on this bursting Tyrannical Skittish Week, it's also it's, it's kind of a uh, maybe a no-win scenario because you do have the final boss of Xavius, which is very difficult, which is very easy for you to die in and it heavily incentivizes using something like Clarity Will, but you also do have a number of mob packs, um, even the very first pull of the instance, 
where there's lots and lots of mobs out all at once and they're dealing heavy spike damage which is more favorable to using clarity will and they're going to be bursting when they all die so you're having to kind of balance those out so in those situations you really have to be making a tough a tough call of how well you're able to deal with the bursting and also knowing your group so shadow covenant uh, especially when you're pugging is what i would say the preferred um but you also have to balance out you know how comfortable you are with clarity of will uh and how often you're really able to use it you know one of the things with shadow covenant is you can just use it instantly when you need it right away so generally what i'll do whenever i get into some of these large trash packs immediately if i if i know that it's a trash pack that's going to get aoe down immediately and there's gonna be bursting really quick i start off with rapture i get everyone shielded up as the bursting starts building up here i'll just pop fade and try to dump a penance uh, now that I have five atonements out and I have my damage reduction rolling. Try to dump my penance into any target that's really left alive. Uh, many times there's gonna be times where there's nobody left alive. So your, your, your priority from here is going to be using uh, shadow men. And again, assuming that you're just gonna stand there, you're not gonna be going after any mobs. You know, using shadow men's is uh, keeping the you know lowest health targets alive. That might be yourself. Um, you know, keep on using powered shields when you're in that mode where basically everyone's about 90% HP and they're chewing through the shields really quickly. You can still go to there. And then when you're in the situation where everyone's dropping really, really low, uh, and like you say, your penance is on cooldown or you need to be healing everybody at once for like that last tick or two, that's when you want to be using Shadow Covenant um, basically like two in a row usually is what I do. Uh, I try not to use much more than two because again, there is the debuff that is built up from it. And again, you eventually just kind of hit a point where it's really not doing much for you. Um, and it's really not providing enough of a benefit. But if you have Grace and you have Shadow Covenant, the effect that you're going to get by having a Toman out on everybody and then hitting Shadow Covenant once or twice is you're going to be pushing your health pool up just enough to survive that damage. Then you can sit and drink and regain your health or you can just wait a couple seconds, let the, the Shadow Covenant debuff fall off hit everybody with Atonement again through another Powered Radiance, then you go into the next mob pack and then you just top everybody off through Atonement healing and things like that. So, and that's something where uh, if you, for example, have Atonement out on everybody, everyone is still smacking one or two heavy mobs. Uh, that's an instance where you're able to really, really easily take care of uh, the Bursting by just you know dropping Barrier, getting everybody inside, getting that bonus Atonement healing off. And then by the time that last mob dies, you don't really have to worry because it's going to be like a one stack bursting that you really have to deal with. So that's, again, a preferred method. But again, there's going to be moments where you really can't rely on that and uh, you have to be able to aggressively use Shadow Covenant in order to keep people topped. So think of Shadow Covenant as something that will aggressively put people's HP up at just high enough of a level to be safe. And you should be just fine for these instances. Um, going forward, you, know, you want to be always watching out for you know who is the mo most vulnerable i know like for example running with a warlock is very very nice because they're barely taking any kind of damage from these things and it's really not even a priority for them but if you're looking at you know say the demon hunter that was running with it or just myself in general like you can really really take tons of damage and that is you know something that is terrifying and you have to be able to quickly react to so defensive penances are really your friend it's something where, you know, the more that you use it, the more that you'll, you know, see the benefits of it. It's a little bit counterintuitive coming from like a raid environment where you're told never to do it. But in Mythic Plus, uh, it's an extremely powerful spell thanks to Grace. And you really, and it really does save lives at a constant pace. And this is something that you always want to be able to have access to. This is always something that you want to make sure that you're able to take advantage of here. Um, and a lot, a lot of times it can get very, very hairy. And the reason that you are surviving is through using things like Shadow Covenant, is through having, you know, personals and prioritizing uh, targets correctly. Like, knowing who you need to get topped off and when you need to get them topped off. In many cases, you may actually just be doing triage where you're deciding who lives and who dies in your group uh, just because of the sustainability. Because if you pour all your focus into one target, then that might actually just mean that you are losing two or three other raid members because their stacks got a little bit too high um and you weren't able to more properly deal with all of them you weren't able to keep everybody alive at the very end at 10 percent. rather you just save one person and two or three people die you don't want to get in that situation you know you want to get everybody at least into a situation where they can live get a bite to eat or something like that get themselves healed up after that damage happens and then you're able to move on from there
Hope you guys enjoyed some of my quick thoughts and perspective on dealing with bursting here. If you want to check out the full run, the link is going to be in the description below. I'm going to be working on some more uh, Mythic Plus guides and Mythic Plus tips and things like that going forward as I'm getting more and more big keys down and as you guys give more suggestions and things like that to me. So hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you all found it a little bit helpful, useful. Uh, let me know what you guys think, suggestions for the future for more Mythic Plus videos and content. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time.